Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy and Uncle Fester is at it again. Today we're going to see an example of logical fallacy Tourette's, whereas you try and disprove basic facts by claiming that they are logical fallacies, and in many cases you don't even use the logical fallacy correctly. As a scientist myself, let me tell you what the scientific method involves. First, you have a question to answer. Now, this could be an observation in nature or anything in particular that you want to evaluate in the natural world. And then based on the cumulative knowledge of mankind and your own thoughts on the matter, you formulate a potential answer to that question, which is called your hypothesis. And then you use that hypothesis, assuming that it is correct, to make a prediction for what you will see in nature. And then you design an experiment to specifically test that proposed answer to the question. Now, while the 24-hour sun, both in the Arctic and the Antarctic, is very well understood on the spherical, rotating, orbiting Earth. Now, on the ice wall model of the flat Earth, 90 degrees south, which we consider the South Pole, is the outer rim of the ice wall. In other words, the outer rim of the disk. And since the final experiment was conducted at approximately 80 degrees south, it was very nearly at the outer rim of the ice wall surrounding the disk of the flat Earth. So while the 24-hour sun is well understood on the flat Earth at the North Pole, it cannot be explained by the flat Earth on the South Pole. As a result, the final experiment was just that. We could confirm the findings predicted by the spherical Earth, and we could conclusively rule out a flat Earth surrounded by the ice wall with 90 degrees south as the outer edge, as proposed by many flat Earth advocates, citing the Gleason map, for example. Now, Nathan, of course, was confronted by the fact that there was a 24-hour Antarctic sun, and he was confronted by this inconvenient fact on his own channel. Let's see what his response was. John LeBon in that chat. Hey, John. Long time no see. Hey, it's great to be here. Hello to Nathan, hello to the panel, all the listeners around the world. So uh, it's great to be here. I wanted to ask you guys, were you predicting there would be footage of a midnight sun? Like say six months ago, did you predict this would be the outcome? No, what we broke down was the two sides of the false dichotomy. So from the globe side, if you affirm the consequent, you can suggest that no 24 hour sun would prove Earth is flat. Fallacy, false dichotomy. On the other side is globe suggesting antipodal positioning will prove a globe so it's two sides of a full psychotomy both affirm the consequent we pointed out both sides of the fallacy so we didn't really make any predictions. No, that's a lot of words there, uh, man. although i just mean as in suppose someone came to you six months ago and said do you believe there would be a midnight sun in antarctica in december had that happened six months ago would you have predicted yes we would have said we don't really base much on beliefs anymore we tend to go with measurements of things but you're entitled oh, to your belief. You wouldn't have guessed yes or no. You wouldn't have had an opinion if there's a sun down there in, Did in, you hear in, the in December. Yeah, he wants a yes or no. Did um, you hear the answer? I mean, you're entitled to your belief. Because I would guess yes. If, some, if someone said to me six months ago, if someone got to Antarctica in December, would there be a midnight sun? I would have guessed yes. But it would have been a guess. I wouldn't have known for sure. But that would have been my best guess. But you're saying that none of you guys would have had a guess either way. No, so when people put it in false dichotomy, we broke down have. both sides of the false dichotomy and didn't make a prediction. Just because you call it a false dichotomy, that doesn't mean it's a false dichotomy. Yes or no, would there be a midnight sun down there? That's a simple question. I, I heard the question. It's like yes or no, if you go to the, the pharmacy today, will the pharmacy be open or closed? It's either open or closed. That's not You're a false not dichotomy. Listening. Will there be a sun in Antarctica mm -hmm. in December? Sure. I mean, but if it is a false dichotomy, we could break it down and detail the false dichotomy instead of making it. Well, you call it a false dichotomy. That doesn't mean it is a false dichotomy. Is there a sun down there or not in December? Midnight sun. Would you have guessed yes or no? I would have guessed yes. I think you guys would have guessed no. You think that? Did and you look at your crystal wrong. ball? Did your crystal ball tell you what I'd think? Well, I'm asking you. You won't answer the question. I don't but you've already why. decided based on what why your crystal ball. That? I mean, it seems like I'm trying to answer, but JLB, you don't know what I'd think about it. But your crystal ball told you you thought I'd think that. That's fascinating. Well, I'm asking you. I'm just asking you the question. Like, what would you have guessed? Okay. Do you want the answer? I'll try and give it for a fourth yes. time. So we broke down the false dichotomy of assuming that the lack of a 24-hour sun would prove a flat Earth, or there being a 24-hour sun would prove a globe. That's a false dichotomy. We broke that down for both sides of the false dichotomy rather than 
expressing our beliefs about what might happen, or in the case of you, divining the thoughts of others with your crystal ball. Tell us again what you thought I'd think there, JLB, because that's fascinating psychology that you would use a crystal ball to divine my thoughts. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did, watching Nathan squirm like that. And there you have it, folks. When the facts do not agree with your fantasy cosmology of a flat Earth, Deny you ever even made a prediction. Deny that you ever had to make a prediction. Now, just to correct Nathan, a false dichotomy is when you claim that there are only two potential outcomes to an observation. In other words, you're claiming that there's a yes or a no answer when there could be a maybe. But as I've demonstrated in the case of 24-hour Antarctic sunlight, there is no maybe. It either is there or it is not. It is predicted by the globe Earth. However, if the 24-hour sun is present, it conclusively rules out a Gleason-style flat Earth surrounded by the ice wall, with the South Pole being at the periphery of that ice wall. However, if Nathan claims that this is a false dichotomy, it is on his shoulders to show the geometry of a working flat Earth model that allows for 24-hour sunlight in Antarctica. And barring that, Calling it a logical fallacy because you don't want to address it doesn't work for anybody. Now, Nathan, let me have a little chat with you directly. I've called you out on this before. Never in the history of science has a scientific observation, hypothesis, or data set been declared invalid by calling it a logical fallacy. I have challenged you to show me a single peer-reviewed journal article in the scientific field that discounts a theory, hypothesis, set of data or observation by calling it a logical fallacy. You won't be able to find one because that's not how science works. The only thing that disproves science, Nathan, is better science. Why don't you up your game a little bit? You have a final experiment. You conduct an experiment that will give us a yes or a no answer to a globe versus a flat earth. However, before you do that experiment, you need to have it reviewed by an actual scientist. I will be more than happy to review it for you and determine whether or not your experiment will give a clear-cut yes or no answer. Then go out and do your experiment, and then we'll review the data together. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy. Y'all take care. Make sure you follow the channel, and I'll see you again soon.